Ranking, mostly, every wrestling game. There was a time long ago I tried this concept, but it wasn't very good. It was unscripted, and the audio sounded like I was recording inside of a tin can that's inside of a closet that's underwater. Let's do a wrestling games tier list since everyone these days has been making tier lists. Let's make a wrestling game based one. All right, that's enough of that. Please, God. Before I start to rank these games, let's go over some exposition first. I'm only ranking games that were released in the US and on home consoles, so PC and handhelds are a no go. I will also not be ranking anything before the PS1 era games. Sorry for any massive LJN wrestling game fans out there. These games suck anyway. And I'll keep each entry down to a couple of sentences. These aren't my full blown thoughts in any way, shape or form. All right, on to the rankings. All right, so let's get this tier out of the way first. Tier seven, miscellaneous. This tier is for games I haven't played, games I have played, but don't have any recollection of, non-wrestling games, and games I don't feel comfortable ranking for whatever reason. WWE 13. I played it, but I can't really recall anything in the game besides the Whoa, we want a revolution song. WWE 2K14. Never played it. Heard it's good. Simpsons Wrestling. Never played it. Heard it's terrible. Def Jam Fight for New York. Never played it, but it's also not really a wrestling game. Lucha Libre. Played it briefly. I remember it not being really all that good. Rumble Roses series. Never played it. WWE Crush Hour. It has wrestlers in it, but there's no wrestling at all. And uh, yeah, uh, just look at this game. Tier six, Jobber, the worst of the worst wrestling games. If it's trash, it belongs here. WrestleMania 21, PlayStation had the SmackDown series, GameCube had the Day of Reckoning series and WrestleMania 19. Xbox had crap. Despite nice graphics, everything else was horrible, including the unimpactful animations. I know wrestling's fake, but I don't think the video games have to be too, you know. WCW Thunder and WCW Nitro. These games are really pathetic. Wrestling moves are severely limited and you can drain your opponent's health with a test of strength. Enough said. The only thing this game does well is the wrestlers cutting promos before you select them. You really think you're ready for the Stingray? You really think you're ready for the Scorpion Deathlock? You think you're ready for a video encounter? You also have these weirdo unlockable wrestlers like everyone's favorite WCW wrestler, Hoof Hearted. <laughs> WCW Backstage Assault. I don't know how you can make a concept like this and then have the result be a completely boring slog of a game. With hit detection that resembles trying to swat a very maneuverable mosquito rather than hitting a wrestler. WWE 2K20. This game was so historically bad that 2K had to delay the next installment of their game. You all know the deal when it comes to this game. It's the wrestling equivalent to Sonic 06, minus the bestiality. Tier 5, Lower Card. These are bad games that are just barely above being worthless. WWE 2K15. I'm really contemplating putting this in the previous tier. For me personally, this is one of the most disappointing games I've ever played. All of the hype and the marketing and the trailers and the screenshot, all of that ended up leading to a game that has significantly less content than the previous games, significantly less match types, a career mode that's so bland and boring where you make your wrestler in a creation section that is also significantly cut back from previous games, and this game introduced the slow plotting gameplay that the modern 2K games have today. More on that later. Acclaim's PS1 games. Has Acclaim ever made or published a great game in the history of their existence? Could it be Mary Kay and Ashley Girls Night Out? I don't know. What I do know is that it's not their PS1 wrestling games. These games aren't even suitable for subhumans. The main flaw when it comes to these games is that in order to do moves, you have to enter in fighting game commands. What a dumb choice. Imagine playing a wrestling game and you're about to win with a finisher, but you have to pause and scroll through a list of moves in order to find the rock bottom. The ECW games were the same deal, and not even all that extreme. Like you can throw someone into Lunchable sauce, but that doesn't really make the game any good. I really thought about putting these games in jobber tier, but I'll admit there is a little bit of charm to them. And they have stuff like create a pay-per-view events and wrestlers voicing themselves is pretty cool too. WCW Mayhem, the other EA WCW game. Though I'll give this one some credit because unlike Backstage Assault, it's more entertaining than staring at a damn brick wall. But that's not really saying all that much. 
I think you'll see a trend on this list of these lower ranked games never getting sequels where they can build a solid foundation. EA attempted to make a sequel to this game with AKI leading development, but WCW folded and we never got that game. Legends of WrestleMania Not to be confused with Legends of Wrestling, even though they both share a similar title and mediocrity. This is a really boring game that has quick time events and wrestlers that look like they roared it up more than normal. Not even really worth looking at. Legends of Wrestling The game has a good concept, but it's ruined by clunky gameplay and controls. Also, this art style is downright gross. If you want to give Hogan a full head of hair, fine, whatever. But what's with these body proportions? Legends of Wrestling Showdown. Same deal as the first one. You could tell this was not tested in the slightest. The roster is pretty cool though. Man, these Legends of Wrestling games are so disappointing. Who made these? Oh, son of a bitch! WWF Raw. You poor Xbox owners. The closest thing you got to a good wrestling game was navigating the menu to the WrestleMania 22 DVD. Backyard Wrestling Series. I was never a fan of deathmatch wrestling, but I was really into backyard wrestling when I was younger. No, I don't have footage of me jumping off of houses or anything, but I had those backyard wrestling DVDs. When I heard that these games were being made, I was hyped, but unfortunately the games ended up being this super over the top game that resembles Power Stone more than it does wrestling. Lame. Five Star Wrestling. I don't know if I'm supposed to take this game seriously or not. It has wrestlers that are obvious ripoffs of other wrestlers. Like, I wonder who Andy Organ is supposed to be. Whoa! The game did try some cool things like limb damage actually coming into play, but the game is just a clunky, unfinished mess, and not even Andy Organ's theme can save it. SmackDown, just bring it. I'd like to say a special fuck you to whoever made the intro to this game. You watch this and think you're about to play the most advanced game ever? But the actual game looks like this. Just Bring It is a step backwards from SmackDown 2 in every way imaginable, especially the season mode. Not to mention that the commentary is so bad it's good, because commentary lines are chopped up and stitched together. Each line by the commentators is a Frankenstein monster. Hey, can you hear that groaning? Huh? Tier 4, Mid Carter. This is where we start to get into some decent stuff. Nothing here is going to blow you away though. Royal Rumble. I debated on whether this should be in the previous tier or not. This is an arcade port, which means the game is severely limited not only in terms of gameplay, but also content. I mean, the game is called Royal Rumble, but the game doesn't have 30 wrestlers in it. It doesn't make any sense! If you can look past stuff like that, you can find a relatively fun game here. And the ring can fill up with 9 wrestlers in it, which modern games can't even do today. WWE Battlegrounds an attempt to make an arcade-like experience but falls flat. So many wrestlers have similar movesets, so many things are locked behind microtransactions, and the design choice makes everyone look like they have dwarfism. Fun in small bits with other people, but not much else. WrestleMania the arcade game and In Your House. Fun games that are low on content and replayability. The wrestlers are given moves and attacks based on their gimmicks. You have fighting game commands on this game too, but it's a little bit more forgivable this time around because this is an arcade game and not a simulation. WrestleMania 18 Octopuses have 9 brains. 8 brains for each individual tentacle, and then one main brain. They also have 3 hearts. 2 to pump to the gills, and then 1 to pump to the rest of the body. I'm telling you this because it's more interesting than anything I can possibly say about the mundane WrestleMania 18. At least WrestleMania 18 led to some better games. Legends of Wrestling 2 A general improvement over the first game and much better than Showdown, but still has that classic acclaimed jank. The best thing about this game is the interviews with the wrestlers. Raw 2 A general improvement from the first game, and now even has a season mode where you drop boxes on wrestlers heads like it's a damn Looney Tunes cartoon. The series could have been made into something great, but after this one we never saw another Raw game again. WWE 12 A step down from Smackdown vs Raw 2011 The game's main marketing was something called Predator Mode, which sounds like something that would put me on an FBI list. What is Predator Mode? Who knows, it's just a shitty marketing term that we haven't heard of in almost 10 years. Also, I hated this lie they put in the trailer where it gives the impression that you can combine moves like this. This is nowhere in the game. Smackdown. Outside of sentimental value, I don't see how this game holds up today. It does nothing better than any of the higher tier games, and not a single aspect of this game has aged well. 
Even the gameplay, which is the best part of this game, is outperformed by the AKI games, which came out around the same time. TNA Impact. This game could have been the start of a great series of wrestling games, but it wasn't meant to be. Impressive graphics. I'm sure you've all seen this image of Booker T by now. Fluid animations and solid gameplay. Unfortunately, movesets are very limited, as is creation and replayability. WWE 2K16, 17, 18, and 19. This will probably be my most controversial take in the whole video. While these games have differences in certain modes and whatnot, at the end of the day, I find the 2K series to be super slow and boring games. The games focus on simulation, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. But the gameplay is brought to a crawl with these stamina meters and reversal limitations and rest holds and animations that take 2,174 hours to play out. Unimpactful animations, not to mention the absurd amount of glitches these games have, the complete downgrade to weapon physics compared to earlier games, and uneventful career modes where you play random matches with no story or a story that was written by people who don't understand how humans interact in our society. You gotta check out this guy's highlight online. He's going to be a huge star in WWE someday. <laughs> Thanks. That's nice of you to say. I mean about the wrestler on the poster who is um, definitely not me. Come on, let's go. I can go on and on, but we gotta move on. And I feel like I'll be making this rant again in March anyway. SmackDown vs Raw 2008. Gameplay was significantly slowed down and not in a realistic way. Wrestlers had these archetypes that were interesting but limited everyone's movesets and some archetypes were better than others. GM mode and season mode were worse than 07's and the roster was completely pathetic. SmackDown vs Raw 2009. Better than 08 but missing the beloved GM mode for some reason. They added new things that were a little too ahead of their time like create a finisher, which just looks really really silly, and create a highlight reel. I like the road to Wrestlemania where you're searching for Chris Jericho to attack her, but the game is just paper thin on content. Tier 3 Main Eventer This is where we get into some good games. Fire Pro Wrestling Returns This was my introduction to the series. The main strength of this game is the character customization where you can pretty much make anyone with this great pixel art and assign that person to your very own brand, all while throwing them in an exploding barbed wire match because, you know, pro wrestling. The thing that just doesn't connect with me or ever connected with me when it comes to the Fire Pro games is the gameplay. The hit detection on strikes is weird and the grappling system seems rudimentary. I was hesitant on even adding these games to the list because I personally don't see the appeal that a lot of other people do. Maybe I'm missing something, but I'll rank it here. Wrestling Empire This was the hardest game to rank on the whole entire list. Wrestling Empire gives you so much freedom to do what you want in this wacky, wacky game. From double team moves to insane spots to dying in career mode, this has it all, including the new Booker mode that was just recently added. The flip side of that though is that the gameplay isn't really all that great. Yes, it can be fun, but it's heavily reliant on the freedom aspect. As far as the gameplay goes, everyone moves around like they have arthritis or they have plungers stuck to the bottom of their feet. And you could just stand over someone and beat them with a weapon until their health depletes and just win. That's every match. Overall, I think everyone should at least give career mode a try. Smackdown 2. The season mode in here is actually pretty great and you could spend hours in that mode alone, but I just can't get past how technically limited this game is, especially compared to the games on the N64. If anything, the commercial gets at a spot this high on a list on its own. Ah! Your Olympic hero has arrived. It's true, it's true. Hey, think die, kid. Smackdown vs. Raw 2006. This game keeps the fun core gameplay that was established in the previous entries, so you are bound to have a fun time. But this game introduces some things that bog down the gameplay like sleeper hold mini games, double downs, and a goddamn stamina meter. I hate these things. But the addition of GM mode is fantastic, albeit limited. Def Jam Vendetta. Such a weird concept for a game. A game that takes the AKI gameplay formula and runs with it and has a host of rappers to choose from and crazy over the top moves. If you like AKI gameplay, you'll like this. The game tries to give you this impression that all of these guys are fighting in this dark underground illegal setting, but you start a match and one guy is rubbing his ass in your face in the middle of a fake pro wrestling match. 
Damn, that's bizarre. Also, despite having a really, really, really good story mode, there's nothing to do in the game outside of that. Fire Pro Wrestling World. The customization is turned up to 11, and if you are a slimy, uncreative loser like me, you can just download practically anyone your heart desires. Add that along with the Fire Promoter mode makes this game way more better more better? Am I a goddamn first grader? What the fuck? Makes this game way better than Fire Pro Returns. Unfortunately, the gameplay issues I personally have with the series are still there, so I can't rank it too highly. WCW vs NWO World Tour the earliest AKI game on N64, and since it is, it's really limited with features including not being able to create a wrestler, which should be a federal crime. But there is still a very good enjoyable game here that's worth checking out. Smackdown Shut Your Mouth This game improved on the mediocre Just Bring It and shaped the series for years to come. You don't have a Here Comes the Pain without Smackdown Shut Your Mouth laying down the foundation for it first. Any game that has Sean Stasiak in it is good. Coincidence? Probably. Smackdown vs Raw This has that really good Here Comes the Pain gameplay with addition of clean and dirty tactics, which made wrestlers feel different without actually limiting movesets. Also introduced title creation, which is something modern WWE games love to take away and then reintroduce years later as a new feature. My only gripes is that the roster is lacking, the exploration is gone due to realism, and there are no post-match celebrations. What? Did the developers forget, or did they just run out of time? WCW NWO Revenge I was originally going to place this much higher on the list due to sentimental attachment I had with it, and specifically the Executioner, despite me having no idea who the hell he even was. But that wouldn't be really all that fair. Revenge just doesn't do anything better than its follow-up, WrestleMania 2000, besides the roster. Which isn't too much of a big deal, because you could just create your own characters in WrestleMania 2000. Asshole. Which isn't too much of a big deal because you can create your own characters in WrestleMania 2000, and you can't do that in Revenge. Still the best WCW game ever made though. SmackDown vs Raw 2010 The creation here is so in depth. You can create Titantron videos, you have a paint tool to create any logo you want, create any story you want, and share all those things onto community creations, which is something that we all take for granted nowadays. You haven't lived until you're up on some CAW site at 3am trying to make Glacier. Stone Cold was pre-ordered DLC, fuck you. Day of Reckoning 1 and 2. This series is basically a spiritual successor to the AKI games, and both work really well. The main story in both games is good, and I like the fact that you can break up moves, which is something wrestling games didn't have. The roster for both is pretty weak and Day of Reckoning 2 adds the goddamn stamina meter. I hate you. Tier 2 World Champions. The games that are truly great. WWE All-Stars. What a breath of fresh air this game was. An arcade game that is a blast to play, focusing on flashy moves while being fast-paced with constant counters and counters to those counters. Juggling wrestlers in the air with a combo and then grabbing them out of the air to slam them down. Kicking a guy in the air and comboing your finisher off of it. So much experimentation for such a simple game. Fantasy Warfare pits modern wrestlers against classic ones, and you have to choose your side, but you get these video packages that sell the match you're about to have. The roster is admittedly a bit thin, but each guy is unique with their very own archetype. The only complaints I could possibly have is that creation is super limited and the main mode is pretty bland. A sequel could have been made to make these improvements so much more, but we never got one. I don't think those problems hide the fact that this is the best arcade wrestling game that was ever made, and yes, you can at me on that one. WrestleMania 19 Similar to the Day of Reckoning titles, this is another spiritual successor to the N64 AKI games and it delivers. The thing that separates itself from the others is this batshit insane story mode where you are fired from the company so you run around literally murdering construction workers. I know I have a tendency to over exaggerate, but look, you throw people off of a building into this black abyss. What do you think, there's a pile of soft mattresses down there? Nah, yo, this man is dead. You get access to these areas that all have their own objectives in exhibition too. A lot of people are probably turned off by this, but hey, I love it. WrestleMania 2000 Talking about the N64 AKI games are difficult because they're all essentially the same gameplay wise, but WrestleMania 2000 just offers up more than World Tour and Revenge. 
character creation, a season mode, create pay-per-view events, and create titles, all while making gameplay improvements. It's named after a shitty WrestleMania, but any game that has meat, aka Sean Stasiak in it, is a great game. Coincidence? Uh, I don't know. SmackDown vs Raw 2011 Fun fact, this is the only Platinum trophy I have from a wrestling game. This is the culmination of the SmackDown vs Raw series. All of the gameplay, all of the creation, all of the fun was nailed in this installment. Something that was new and for some reason never expanded upon in any future wrestling game was these openly explorable backstage areas in Road to WrestleMania. Rather than just having a match, then a cutscene and repeating until you see the credits roll, this is something Something that actually has more substance. Let's not forget the introduction of weapon physics. No more having objects slide out of the way like in old games. The ability to slam someone through a table sounds like it's nothing special, but it's never been done in a WWE game in this fashion before and the physics in the newer games have been downgraded so it hasn't been done since. If this was the way the SmackDown vs Raw series had to end, it went out with a bang. Tier 1 Hall of Fame, the best of the best. To make things a little bit more suspenseful, there are two games left and I'll talk about both of them and pick which one I think is better. No Mercy is the pinnacle of the AKI gameplay engine. You have the gameplay, the roster, the creation, the weapons, the store with the obscenely expensive hoe, the story mode with branching paths. Everything any fan of wrestling would ever need in a wrestling game and every wrestling fan should experience this game. However, no game is perfect except Cheese Rolling 2000. 2005, of course. The belt creation from WrestleMania 2000 was taken out, entrances were only limited to the stage, and the dialogue looks like it was written by someone who speaks English as their 19th language. Those things are so minuscule though that it's hardly worth pointing out really. No Mercy is a damn classic. Smackdown Here Comes the Pain, between the brutal moves, the match types, and the exploration, you'd be hard pressed to find a better wrestling game. This is the high point of the SmackDown series and quite honestly, the high point of Yoop's games in general. Gameplay being fast paced and having constant action and a season mode that offers up a ton of fun. But if you allow me to be a little nitpicky like I did with No Mercy, I thought the game went a little too over the top with some of these unrealistic aspects. Don't get me wrong, I'll take wrestling in a damn water fountain over 3 minutes to lift someone up like in the modern games, but the Times Square area where you can climb up buildings and do jumping elbow drops off of a helicopter is a bit much, even for me. Also the brawn panty stuff just sucks. Was anyone out there actually getting off to these low poly PS2 titties? Don't answer that. With that said, those issues are so small, not even CSI enhanced zoom could see them. So who's in first? Yeah, yeah, very predictable, I know. But hear me out. There has never been a wrestling game that has had a bigger impact in the genre. The game is still kept alive today by modders with new moves, new wrestlers, and new UI. Fan games want to replicate No Mercy. THQ games wanted to replicate No Mercy. WWE 2K22 is trying to replicate No Mercy. The AEW game hired the director of No Mercy and is trying to replicate it. Not only is No Mercy a great game, but it's a great game that's still being felt in the industry today. While Here Comes the Pain is fantastic, no doubt about it, it hasn't had nearly the amount of impact as No Mercy has. That's my tier list. Did you agree? Did you disagree? Well, you'd have to disagree because I don't think there's one person on the planet who would share this exact same list. In the description, I posted a link to the tier list of the games I ranked so you can make your own special tier list and send me your rankings on Twitter, where I'll most likely reply with a Jay Jameson laughing response. <laughs> but seriously, thank you guys for watching. I'll never ask you to like the video, but I do have a goal in mind, and that goal is the main event of WrestleMania. If you like this video, I get one step closer to that goal.